Hey guys, thanks for stopping by. Joe Sidoti here, and today I wanna to talk about plugins. Do you have too many plugins? That's the question I wanna to get to today. I wanna to talk about all the different varieties that are out there and how your inbox and your social media is just bombarded with all these ads. And how do you know which ones to buy, which ones are good, which ones you need, which ones you don't need? Let's talk about that right now. So at the time of filming this video, it's actually the week of Thanksgiving and Black Friday is coming up, right? Which means all the manufacturers are putting out all their sales and I have just been bombarded in my inbox with email after email of all the Black Friday special deals from all sorts of manufacturers. And so like you, I'm kind of like, man, that's a good deal. Like I may not want to pass that up. Matter of fact, I, I get it. I did, I saw, I saw a deal from Sound Toys and I just said, you know what, I'm doing it. I bought the, uh, the Sound Toys rack because I just have been wanting some of those plugins that are in there for a long time and it was such a great deal. But the question is, did I really need them? Are they gonna make my mixes better? I don't know, I guess time will tell, but I wanna kinda of break down the differences between some of the plugins that are out there and kinda of weigh that against what style of music you're doing, what plugins you already have, and help you maybe decide whether you need that new shiny thing that's just been exploded in your inbox. So first, let's talk about the style of plugin that is more like the vintage style, right? You got vintage channel strips and reverb units and EQs and compressors. What makes it good? What makes it be something that you have to have? Well, I'll give you an example. Let's say you at some time have worked in a commercial studio that had real analog vintage gear and you got trained on that gear and you got used to it. And now that you're in the whole digital domain and you're sitting here in your DAW and you're, you're trying to get that vibe again that you had, well then vintage plugins might be the right fit for you because you're, you're used to hearing that kind of mojo and you're trying to get that back. You're trying to get some of that life back that you're used to. So vintage plugins are the way to go. But I mean, how many vintage EQs do you really need? So let's say you're working in a studio and they've got a console, whether it's a, a Trident console or a Neve or an SSL or an API or a Mackie, right? It doesn't matter. Most of the time you use that console for everything. Now you probably had some outboard gear off to the side, a couple outboard compressors and EQs, but for the most part when you were tracking, especially drums and you had multiple things, you know, you had to use the console's EQ. And if the console had compression, you probably used that too. Was it good enough? Was it lacking? Do you wish that you had more? I don't know, that's a good question. So how many EQs do you really need if you're going for that whole vintage thing? Are you trying to emulate the studio environment that you once worked at? or that you wish that you had, and you wish that you could have a, a Neve console to track everything, well then I guess you just need a Neve EQ, right? Now look, I understand that in this digital world that we live in, we can have so many choices that, that we can almost go crazy. And I think that can be a good thing, but I think it's also mostly really a bad thing. You have got too many choices. One of the first videos I made on this channel was talking about just making a decision and committing it and moving on. That first instinct usually being your right instinct. So I'm not saying don't go out and get a couple different style EQs. What I'm saying is ask the question, do you really need it? Is it making the difference? Or is having more options gonna really hinder you? So for argument's sake, let's say yes, you really do want a couple different EQs. Well, okay, maybe you need a Neve EQ and you want an SSL EQ. But then you start going through this plugin list of what you've got and you've got API EQs and then you've got the EQs that come with the DAW and then you've got digital EQs and then you've got EQs with dynamics and you got oh, just an endless list of stuff. And, and I bet 
you spend more time either going up and down that list, trying different things to see what sounds better, or you're the opposite and you really only use one or two of them and the other ones are a waste. So why even have them there? And if you are going through all of them, you're spending so much time that you could just be picking one EQ, making some big, bold decisions and moving on. So the challenge here is I want you to try and mix a song or record a song and then mix a song using only one, maybe two different EQs and see if you can't challenge yourself to put it through its paces and to push it to the limits because that's what we did in the 80s and the 90s when it came to music and EQ. You had what you had and you pushed it to the limits. Now let's talk about vintage compressors. This one is interesting. I mean, <laughs> compression can add so much character to a sound, I'd argue almost even more than EQ can add in some cases. So you want to have lots of characters, you want to have lots of ingredients to make your recipe, but how many ingredients do you need? And if we're going down this whole ingredients analogy path, you know, let's say you're making cookies. Well, all the cookies are most likely going to have flour, sugar, eggs, salt, things like that. And then depending on what you're making, is it chocolate chip cookies, oatmeal raisin? Well, then there's chocolate chips in some and oatmeal raisin in others. And so I'm, I'm using this analogy to have you ask yourself the question, other than the, the special circumstances like the chocolate chips and the oatmeal, what are you using for your flour, sugar, salt, things like that? And that's more what I'm getting after today. So going down the path of compressors using the cookie analogy, your flour, sugar, and salt, you know, can maybe be two or three different types of compressors that you really truly need to sculpt your whole sound. And that can vary, but maybe all you really need is an 1176 and then like something like an opto compressor, like an LA-2A, and then something maybe like a VCA style compressor, a DBX-160 or an SSL or something like that. You know, and those three ingredients can get you almost any recipe. So if you have more, then those basic ingredients, and again, you go down this long list of all these plugins from all these manufacturers. Is it just different brands of flour? And flour is flour and salt is salt. This one claims that it's, it's the best flour and this one is the, the best salt. It's just salt. I mean, at some point, just pick one, go down the shelf, go down the aisle. Sorry for these stupid analogies, but it kind of makes sense to me and just pick a brand of salt, pick a brand of flour, and move on and start making some dang cookies. In my opinion, one of the worst things you can do is have too many choices where you're just having a hard time committing to something and you know sticking to that first instinct, which is usually correct. Okay, now that we've talked about EQ and compression, let's talk about effects. Right, this is the thing that kind of puts the icing on the cake, so to speak. So if we're gonna talk about food analogies, well then there's only a couple types of frostings out there, but you can make them different colors and you can make them, you know, you can put writing on the cake on the icing, right? The whole icing on the cake is something that finishes it off. And for some people, it's their favorite part. I know for me, I love the icing. Give me the corner piece because it's got more icing all over it. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, I mean, how many reverbs do you need? Maybe you need a plate and a room and a chamber or a hall, something that's nice and short, something that's medium, something that's long. And by the time that you mess with how much pre-delay, how wide it is, highs, mids, and low EQs to really sculpt it, you can make it sound like a bunch of different things. That's like adding food coloring to your icing, the EQ and the pre-delay and how much decay, but it could still be one stinking unit. You know how many studios use a Lexicon 480L on every vocal that's ever been recorded there? It's countless. So they've got one reverb unit that kind of gives them all the flavors that they need. Now that's just one example. Maybe you're trying to recreate the sound that the Beatles got. And so you go out and buy a plugin that does that kind of reverb, the chambers, and you've got different plates and you've got 
different metals and beryllium and aluminum and steel and it's like you know what man sometimes just pick one and move on and the same goes with delay you know you've got tape delay and you've got echoes and you've got you know digital delays i mean there are so many good units out there that do all the different types of delays so find one that you like and stick with it and just use it now look I'm not suggesting that you necessarily go and start removing plugins and deleting them. What I am saying is there's nothing wrong with finding one or two that you like and those being your main go-to plugins. You know, keep the arsenal just in case, but for the most part, just stick to the one or the two that you know gets the job done every time. It'll make you more consistent and it'll make your mixes come together faster. Because honestly, at the end of the day, what people are going to perceive as a good mix is going to be a well-balanced mix where they can hear everything. The highs are nice and high. The lows are nice and deep. And yeah, the reverb's going to help, but they're not going to be sitting there going, oh man, if he just would have used this plate instead of that plate, this whole mix would have come together. No, they're not going to do that. It's all about just picking some flavors and put them together balanced and well, and you get yourself a nice recipe. Now we could go down a long list when it comes to distortion plugins and modulations and amp sim plugins. I mean, gosh, how many guitar sims do you need? One or two? Maybe. I say find one that you like and just stick with it because even with inside that plugin, you're gonna find way more amplifiers than you would ever typically own. I mean, I've worked at studios that had a whole array of guitars, guitar amps and cabinets to choose from. But for the most part, I kind of had like one or two. This one does really good with clean. This one does really good with, with dirty. And this one does really good with heavy. And that's it. Like three heads, two different cabinets, mostly just a Marshall cabinet. And you try different microphones, different EQ, and it sounds completely different. Same setup, switch guitars. Take your telly and put on your Les Paul. Voila, it sounds completely different. So too many choices can just cause you to go down an endless rabbit hole that's just wasting time and it's not really making anything better. Look, if you've watched videos of mine on this channel and you've seen me do tutorials, you see a long list of plugins. But to be honest with you, I use the same few every time. If, if you don't know that, watch watch my mix and album from start to finish series because I use some of the same plugins on every song because they just work and it gets me to the end result that I'm looking for quickly. I know what it sounds like, I know what it's gonna do and I use it. So when we're talking about EQ and compressors, maybe it's not the vintage thing that you like. Maybe you want something super transparent and clean and that's fine, but that means you could probably just use what came with your DAW and be good to go. I mean, there's not, there's not a lot to it. It's not very complicated. Now, this EQ has a really pretty top end and this EQ has a really deep punch bottom end. You've heard me say things like that and it's true. There are different characteristics of different plugins. What I'm saying is simply find the one or the two that do the different variances that you like and move on. There is nothing wrong with improving your craft and this video is not telling you don't go out and spend money. I will say though, do what I do and wait for the sales if you feel like you really need that plugin. I really wanted the Decapitator from Sound Toys and I just didn't have it. So I waited for a deal that was really too good to pass up from Sound Toys. So I bought the rack, which of course comes with Decapitator. It comes with some other stuff too. Some of it I'll use, some of it I won't, but the point is, I spent enough time working on mixes that I realized after demoing different things, this one thing is going to get me to where I want to be quicker. I'm not just taking someone else's word for it that, oh, well, if you're not using Decapitator on your drum bus, then your drums suck. No, I'm doing what I do. I'm using the plugins that I have, and then I can try other things and demo other things for myself and make a decision. Is that other thing going to make my job easier? Is it going to bring my mix together faster? Those are the two criteria. And ultimately, will it make it sound better, right? Choices don't necessarily mean 
better. Sometimes more choices means worse. All right, so let's wrap this up with a bow and answer the question, do you have too many plugins? Well, that's up for you to decide, but what, here's what I suggest you do. Go through all of your plugins and really experiment with them. Find out the few EQs that you might want, the two or three different compressors that you might want. Find out what really works for you. What's the tool that is getting the job done? And then just stick with those. One drill that drills screws into a wall is all you need. There's a couple types. You might want just a regular drill and you might want a hammer drill. But do you need three hammer drills? No, not in today's digital world. That one hammer drill will, can go on every track. So just find the tools that are working for you, stick to them. It will make you more consistent. It will make your mixes better. It will make them come together faster. I mean, I feel like a broken record sometimes. I say that all the time, but it's so true. We just have too many choices and we can sit there for hours just coming up with the perfect reverb. And I say, hey, it does it have space. Does it add some vibe? Awesome. Let's keep moving forward. All right, look, I hope this video was at least entertaining. I hope that, that it maybe helps you answer the question of, gosh, do I have too many plugins or do I need more? Or maybe it's time that I just start picking and choosing and pretending like I'm in that studio and I've got my console and I've got my couple things of outboard gear. If they could do it, I can do it. And I think that's, what, that's the point that I'm trying to get to is come up with your toolbox and start fixing stuff and start making music. You know, I don't say this often, but uh, matter of fact, I don't say it at all, but did you know that you can buy Sedoti Sound merch and support this channel by doing that? All you have to do is go to sedotisound.com shop, and that's where you'll find a link to my Teespring store right now, that's the way I'm doing it, where you can get shirts and hats and hoodies and all sorts of things. Hey, look, Maybe you would actually enjoy wearing something like that. Maybe you want to buy it as a gift for someone else. Maybe you just want to support the channel. All things are good and I really appreciate it. All right, guys, I really appreciate your time stopping by. We'll see you on the next video. If you like this video, then click that like button. I appreciate it. And subscribe to the channel and help support Sedoti Sound. And click that bell if you want to be notified when I release new videos. And of course, you can find me on all sorts of social media, so be sure to check that out. If you'd like to work with me on an upcoming project, then make sure to visit sedotisound.com for more information. All right, guys, thanks a lot.